the week of Benjamin Bridges. We're all here for you, Earl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give the same talk Karina's heard five times this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I spoiled the answer last evening, mm -hmm. just after the meditation class. I used the Telegram chat and say, guys, do you know what Earl told us today? Like, blah, 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 right now. And then, gosh, <laughs> they, they knew the right answer. <laughs> and they were smiling. I was like, uh oh, I just did the another good thing <laughs> but i was so inspired so sorry mm -hmm. not so <laughs> Whoa. what time is it um for those in russia hey anastasia again arena hello oh um, hey katya 7 p.m I'm going to show off a picture that Anastasia's daughter made for me. Her name's Kate or Katya. It's the story of the bus that we used to talk about, about how we can expand the edge of our kindness. And she was listening and she made this awesome little artwork of a bus and submarine maybe or uh i don't know open to interpretation but it's on my fridge it reminds me of um trying to expand the edge of kindness being nice to all the people on the bus like all the people that we meet today it's cute right there she is <laughs> Rina, you're back too. I get to hang out with all my friends today. We are everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Anna in the house. Which house? Menla house? Where are you? In uh, Bucharest. Oh. My <laughs> house. <laughs> cool. Um, hello, Shalimar. Hello, Tanya. We'll give a couple more minutes. This is a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting uh, this crowd. I don't know what I was expecting. But um, let's begin. Um, Polina, you're going to translate? All right. You ready? Cool. Is my audio good? Is my visual good? Oh. 
Awesome. So welcome to the conclusion of the meditation challenge. Um, um, I would love to start by having people share what their highlight of the program was. So if you want to share verbally or a written form, um, I'd love to start by hearing what was uh, what was the cool, what was the highlight, what was the best part? Verbally would be nice if you want to do that. Hey, Sue. Hey, Sydney. Lorena's in the house. Favorite meditation, insight, favorite instructor. Uh oh, we might have to go to plan B here. We could just meditate for the half hour. <laughs> All right. Well, let's um, let's talk about what I wanted to talk about today. Then I had a class the other day where. Um, this has been my theme for the week. I've been thinking about this a lot. Where someone asked me, what time, what's the best time of day to meditate? And what's the best time of day to meditate and um, for how long? And I know some people have been in classes where we've been talking about it this week. But I'm curious if you were to chat in the answer to that or if you were the teacher and somebody asked, what's the best time of day to meditate? And for how long, what you would say. What's the best time of day to meditate? And for how long? Someone says 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. My God, your practice is, oh, three, yeah, three hours of practice? Damn. Whenever, whatever works for you. Savoni, I think that's a really Great answer. And that's my second answer. Um, because it means that we should figure out when my mind is the most alert. And what's what's the optimal time for me to meditate? And then to live my life around that so that I am prioritizing my life where I know what the best time for me is to meditate. And then I'm making that time sacred. And I'm reserving it for practice. So for me, first thing in the morning is when my mind is the most alert and awake and energized. And so if I prioritize my life to optimize that time for my practice, um, then I'm prioritizing my meditation and I'm prioritizing becoming meditative as a you know, more all-encompassed lifestyle. That was my second answer. My first answer was what Christiana said all the time. Right now, it's the first word in the Yoga Sutra, Atta. Atta. What Atta yoga, root yoga right now, like meditate right now. Best time for meditation right now. And right now. And right now. And Ahora, ahora, now. And uh, and then for how long? Well, all day long. So, you know, a lot of us struggle to get meditation into our daily schedule. So how the hell are we going to meditate right now and all day? You know, it's already hard enough to, to figure out how to meditate and be inspired. So what does it mean to meditate right now and all day? And it's a practice called, it's an actual yoga, called Shilamgi Namjur. 
Uh, what's Nelmjor mean? Yoga. Yeah, it means a practice, or it's an it's the Tibetan. It's how the Tibetans translated yoga. Um, key means of, so it's the yoga of Chi Lam. Lam is like the path, like the Lam Rim. And Chi is it means things or Dharma or essence. So Chi Lam Ki Nanjur is the yoga of. It means all day long yoga. It's the yoga of the path of Dharma, meaning how Geshe translated is all day long yoga. So it's an actual yoga practice. Um, like what's our meditation object off the cushion? So we really need to kind of figure out a meditation object on the cushion, obviously, in our formal practice. But what's our practice? Sorry, pal, I'll try to slow down. What's our practice off the cushion? What's our meditation object off the cushion? What's our, our meditation focus throughout the day? And that can be, you know, one of a whole bunch of different things, like what? What are examples of objects that we can use for a meditation practice off the cushion? Yeah, six times book. Karina said that's a great example. Having the benefit of heard this talk five times this week. Service is a great, it's a little general. I would define it a little more than that. Wisdom, compassion, yeah. And then to again be, like Benji said, the four measurables. So that's a more tangible practice of compassion. Compassion is very general. What, it, what am I going to tangibly do to develop compassion or to what's my object to use throughout the week? Uh, remembering a pen is an awesome example. So we're measurable. So it doesn't really matter, right? In the same way that that Patanjali in the Yoga Sutra, he gives a whole bunch of ideas for the object to use in meditation. And then after going through about eight of them, he says, it doesn't matter, you choose anything. So what's our all day long practice? Doesn't really matter, but choose something. You know, we have to have something to keep our mind. Otherwise, if we just meditate for 20 minutes, the mind is not in training the other 23 hours and 40 minutes, which is a bad ratio. We can't train the mind for 20 minutes and then let it go crazy for 23 hours and 40 minutes. We won't, I don't think we'll progress very quickly. Um, I think it's like taking one step forward and four or five steps back. And we progress will be very, very slow. So our meditation practice on the cushion should be enhancing our meditation practice off the cushion, our capacity to keep our mind on that object throughout the day is increased by our practice on the cushion, right? We go on the cushion, we do some mind training, we're increasing our capacity to keep the mind on an object. And then in the day, we try to hold that thread through the day by having a meditation object that we're doing in our Chulam Kinanjor practice. And that focus throughout the day as best we can increases our capacity for mind training on the cushion. We're more able to do the practice on the cushion, which increases our capacity from keeping our mind on the object through the day. which helps us keep our mind on the object on the cushion, which helps us in the day. <laughs> so, you know, now that the formal program of 
is over you know it's not like okay thank god you know that's over it's uh you know we've got a bunch of meditations that people have access to through the youtube that we can practice that we can go deeper in but also it has to be a more extensive expansive view of what meditation is and what meditation can be um so let's let's do a little bit of meditation and um we'll just kind of connect with breath being present in the present rejoice about the meditation we have been doing and then think of going forward as a program ends a new program starts a new chapter is opened what are some of the options for a all day long practice and is there one that i want to specifically focus on and uh We'll just do that for like five minutes and then we'll come back in a group. And it'll be mostly unled, unguided. It'll be mostly time to um, let that let that roll around in your brain and come up with an answer. Anastasia, please don't close your eyes and meditate while driving. Here we go. Your daughter is not old enough to drive as great an artist as she is. So take a moment, stretch, do what you need to do to find a seat, a posture that's conducive to the mental state that we're trying to create, one that's relaxed, but vibrant and alert. And then you can use a somatic experience, a body sensation to help us become present in the present. And then Moving from that experience to the sensation of breath around the tip of the nose. And we'll use that as an anchor for the mind to keep us connected to being present. And then we'll take 10 breath cycles. To ground in that experience of being present. Filtering away the thoughts of earlier today or what's to come. And then let that counting fade away. Take a few moments without negative judgment to rejoice about the meditations you have been doing, the effort you have been putting into mindfulness. 
whether that's once in the last month or twice a day, every day, doesn't matter. it's likely there's qualities that we believe in that meditation can bring us. And so we're putting the work in to work towards realizing those qualities. And even if we're not perfect at it, that's awesome. Recognizing that will help us remove the discrepancy between our ideal practice and our actual practice. You know, think about ideas on expanding that view of meditation to being more than just what we do on the cushion. And consider what options you have as a meditation object to carry you throughout the day. Even if there's one that seems like the obvious choice, go through other options. What are the qualities you want to develop that this practice, a practice will lead you towards? So we could start with a goal in mind and then think of the practice that will lead to that goal. And then get a little granular about it. What specifically is the practice? Compassion is a general. What's the specific? How can you carry it out? How can you implement it? How can you measure success? What are the actual steps of the practice? Then drop all of that again and rest in the 
um, just the felt sense of joy in caring about these practices, like a virtual self hug. Whether you, your ideal practice looks like your actual practice or not. Give yourself a mental pat on the back. And with that, we can come back to our space. And somehow we only have seven minutes left. So um, I would love to hear either chatting in or sharing what, uh, what people thought of or what's a meditation focus they can carry through the day in a Chulam Ki Namjur practice. And um, be concise, and then we'll talk about one last thing before our half hour is up. Bob Serino, The Art of Not Getting Angry. Patience. Cool. Karina says being more aware when answering questions. So the goal is awareness. And then that's a real specific time where we can apply that. So it's, it's cool. It's um, tangible. It's measurable. Yes, Pao, you should be kind with your speech, especially to your fellow employees. Yeah, mindfulness while eating, that's a, such a cool thing because it's something that we do, you know, throughout the day. So it's a really good opportunity or trigger for practice. And it's it's kind of how that practice is often built around finding things that trigger our mind into that practice. So some other examples, so eating is a really good example. It could be every time we walk out a door or in a door, going from outside to inside. Oh yeah, okay. I just walked from inside to outside. Now, what was my practice focus today? Okay, humility, I don't wanna be fake. Okay, or it could be when we go from sitting to standing or standing to walking or from standing to sitting. So we use these things that we commonly do through the day as triggers to remind us of our all day long practice. That's a really uh, potent way to, to do this practice. NG, three spheres, cool. Very intellectual. Yeah. Getting out of limitation. Things like that, I would get really like granular about see more possibilities, get out of the limitation, and really think of how how am I going to do that as much as possible? What are the three things I can do today to do that? Or three times today that I can do that? Or I would get real try to be very as we are in formal meditation, clear about our object. How can we find clarity? in this idea of a meditation practice throughout the day. Tonglen, that's beautiful. That's such a good all day long practice because we can again, link that to breath. And when are we not breathing? Um, so that's super cool. All right, we have three minutes. Um, I wanna talk about one other way, you know, now that one, chapter has closing, what's the next chapter? How can we can continue our study of meditation? And I wanted to talk about, uh, I hate to, I don't like to promote courses that I make, 
in general because I'm generally not happy with them. But uh, for a change, I am happy with a course that we made uh, called Inner Fundamentals. I'm not happy with the title of it. Did we change the title? We did. Intro to Meditation? Good. Okay, Intro to next Meditation. Um, it's short classes. It is seven to 10 minute classes. I think there's 12 of them, something like that. And they're, they're very, so they're just small little chunks that build on each other that go through the nine stages of meditation. I think it, for those that are familiar with the classes I teach through Three Jewels, um, it's a very similar style to that. I think it's really accessible for people that have never meditated before. The language is very clear and concise in the style of John Yates, and also allows us to you know, have a resource that we can go back to over and over again to remind us of what the practices are. So I think it's a good resource to share with people that are looking to get into meditation. Um, for somebody that wants to understand the practice of mind training from the perspective of uh, using breath as an object in shamatha. Um, what else to say about it? There's a couple longer lead meditations in it. It is uh, beautifully produced by Cousin Vinny in the outskirts of New York in a snowy mountain retreat. Um, so if you're looking for a resource, I don't think there's a lot of good meditation resources. Um, you know, I think there's a few books that I, I think are great, but not a lot. Uh, I think live teachings is really important, but as a resource, a pre-recorded resource, I'm actually, I actually stand behind this one. So if you want to check it out, uh, there's the QR code. Other than that, uh, Pal, thanks for driving this event and this series of um, teachings and organizing our teachers to, to lead these meditations. If you didn't do, and the teachers that did it, Shalimar, Tanya, uh, Benji, I don't know if you led one or not, but um, thank you for, for doing that. And you can find them on the Yoga Studies Institute YouTube channel. They're all available for free. There is, um, I don't know, how many are there? Ten. Twelve. And uh, 12 different meditations that uh, you can access from there too and have some, um, you know, guidance in those different meditations. There's the link. Thank you, Lorena. Um, so I think that's about it. You know, thanks for being part of the Yoga Studies Institute community and, um, you know, finding ways to be connected through the events and, and being part of that, that community that, that frankly just makes my practice so much better. And, um, you know, it's a huge benefit to me to be part of this community. So I really appreciate how we can come together and share in different experiences and ideas and today was a little one way but uh, i look forward to when we have opportunities to um, conversation practice together and and go deeper into these ideas um how or bob or benji other staff members just anything i forgot shalomar Thank you, Earl. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks for, um, you know, spending half an hour in your days. And um, again, appreciate the community and look forward to the next time we can share in it and have a beautiful weekend. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anna, I've got some answers for you. Thanks for putting input into the translation. We'll get on it. Pal, thanks again, Uta. It's nice to see you.
Thanks for co-teaching today.